There we go. It's not legal advice, but it will have to suffice because it's copyright waffle, copyright waffle, copyright waffle. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Jane Secker. Yeah. And I'm Chris Morrison. So um, we are here for the 34th of our copyright and online teaching in a time of crisis webinars. Yes, um, and we're delighted yeah. um, to uh, be here sort of a year on from pretty much when we started this uh, this journey, this uh, venture, yep. um, trying to support the copyright community. And um, we've got some really exciting um, things to get going and some guests with us today, haven't we? So yeah, it's going to be a good one. So I think today, yeah, we're going to see the sort of culmination of a lot of work that's done through getting together and, and these webinars, bringing people together and actually having some something uh, uh, sustainable to come out of it. So it may be that what we're talking about is, is moving away from uh, the time of crisis. Uh, so let's see what we've got um, today. So we've got quite a few things in the um, copyright news to talk about. Um, uh, and then the main uh, topic, as we said, is that consolidation um, of the what's been happening in these webinars for our new copyright and online learning special interest group uh, of the Association for Learning Technology. Um, so there we go. Looking forward to getting started. Absolutely. I see there's a few things already going on in the chat as we go. So yeah, um, I've come over to Emily to talk to us about the, um, the the UK applying to join the Pacific Free Trade Area. So that sounds yep. that sounds like some news that we've missed. So but okay. we yeah. Let's get started. Let's get um, going. <laughs> so what's been happening this week? Well, uh, it is um, it's going to be Easter next week. And um, mm. around where I live, there is a lot of this uh, yarn bombing going on. We were talking, weren't we, Chris, about craftivism and uh, maybe yep. launching a copyright craftivism campaign at some point. But this is the sort of thing that is um, decking the streets of Faversham at the moment. So this is rather cute little uh, chicks that have appeared on some railings. The post boxes have got some amazing toppers on as well. Um, I'll share some, picture, some more pictures um, over the weekend on Twitter probably but um just little signs of spring cheering us all up a little bit of hope on the horizon hopefully so it is yeah. and hopefully yeah. the that you know as we've as we see um those of us in different parts of the uk are, are having uh relaxation of our of the lockdown restrictions so yeah. um slightly jealous of what is able to get a haircut if you're in Wales. I'm still quite, <laughs> still a month away for for those of us in England. But still got the go. big hair. Still got I'm the big still, hair. Chris. Still rocking the big hair. But yeah, <laughs> um, let us know if you want. If there's anything that you're planning to do at Easter, anything that you're wanting to share with others. We're hoping to have an Easter egg hunt um, with uh, all the kids um, in, in my mum's garden. But depends on whether it's raining really, because <laughs> there's no point in anyone turning up. <laughs> Oh, no, right. Um, oh, yes, yeah. you did make, you had your hair done. Right. Shall we get cracking with a with reminder, me. of course, that all of our webinars are on an archive and you can look back at all of these. And we do have plans thinking about where we might make these available. Um, on yes, YouTube we do, well. actually. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From an uh, interesting chat we had earlier with. Uh, yeah. well, we'll come to that. Well, but we'll, yes. we'll come to that in a moment. Um, so. So we have a few things in here. Um, I wanted to draw attention to the book review that, that I wrote on Emily Hudson's uh, book, Drafting Copyright Exceptions. Um, so that's, if you can pop the link into that, um, Jane, that, that was published in the Journal for Copyright and Education and Journal for Copyright in Education and Librarianship. Mm. Um, 
And yeah, the, the summary of that is it, it's, a, it's a good book and you should read it. It's an important book for those of us in our situation. Um, and uh, Emily has also uh, had a, uh, a paper published in this special issue of Teaching Media, um, which is part of the journal um, for JCMS Stanzas Media Studies. Um, um, and uh, I've made reference to this article in recent this copy seek discussion about this. Um, but also this week we were um, uh, I think many other people were also at the the uh, create public lecture that Emily gave talking about this uh, about the book and about some of the, the her, her thoughts on on where we are with understanding copyright exceptions and and what we might do in future, um, certainly in the UK in a in a post brexit environment so yeah um, it was a great it was a great session and there wasn't really enough time for questions and we have been discussing with emily and we're going to get some dates out i think in may for um some sessions run by um our group aren't we to to talk about to talk about some of the topics raised in the book and um yeah, yeah that, definitely that looking, looking so, forward to that emily yeah and emily i don't know if there's anything you would want to to add to that Give her a moment to reply. If not, <laughs> then we can always move on. Excellent. No, Brilliant. Just looking forward to very talking much more. Excellent. Excellent. Good. 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 Um, the Sci Hub news story. So this is the uh, statement from the City of London Police Force, the PIPQ, the Intellectual Property Crime Unit, in which they are talking about the risks and the security risks that come from uh, using Sci Hub. Um, interesting to see the that the organization that is behind the press release that, that that the police have picked up on is this psi registry organization that certainly seems to be um very much representing publisher interests in this um so we just thought we'd we, we'd raise that because it is getting discussed i know it's being looked at um by those in, in institutions who take security um, IT security issues very seriously and there is um, at the moment there are concerns about um, cyber security threats we know that there are some institutions that have fallen um, victim to this and particularly aggressive uh, ransomware uh, malware um, action but also I think there's certainly I think a need to think um, quite carefully about what messages are being put out there um, and exactly what is you know what are the issues and are they copyright risks or are they security risks or are they actually um something else um that, that needs to be thought you know thought through if you're if you're having um those sort of conversations within a university so that's a whole topic for discussion we just thought we would raise it here um to say we're, we're aware of that and that's certainly something that's been taking up some of my time um okay Thanks, James. That's good that we've got a one day conference to cover in detail the, the cybersecurity uh, from from the STM publishers perspective. Um, we'll keep a track of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. OK, so um, next over to me, this is um, uh, an event that's actually happening next week, um, which is um, about an educational video cartoon series that's been developed by um, Dina Matsuku, who's a, a teaching fellow at Robert Gordon University. Um, now, uh, Dina um, is um, at, at the moment, there are two videos available. They're sort of very much in the information literacy sort of space. So um, they're um, uh, about online resilience and misinformation. They're aimed at um, children, um, so nine to 12 year olds. Um, but um, what we know is in the pipeline is um, going to be one about copyright. Um, and so Dina is hopefully gonna be joining us um, in one of our later um, webinars, probably in, in May to talk about that. Um, but I think there's a bit of a sneak preview if you go along to the event. And I understand a certain retired copyright um, and IP sort of professor might be starring in this cartoon. Is, is it, have you heard that, Chris? I have. I have yes. seen some of the Twitter chat. So yes. that'll be very interesting to see that comes out. Apparently it's an Oscar worthy performance. Apparently, yes. Yeah. But anyway, that event's happening next week. Um, and I know 
you know people might well be interested um, in the sort of resources she's developing for schools um, and it'd be really exciting to see what what she's going to come up with uh, or what she has come up with um, in terms of teaching children about copyright um, next up is um, just I wanted to highlight um, I'm quite into podcasts I have to say at the moment I'm finding them like I'm just I'm just like a bit well binging on podcasts and um this podcast is quite a new one that was launched by creative commons it's part of their sort of celebration of 20 years of the creative commons movement um and uh i think there are two or three episodes up at the moment um and they're quite short they're about 20 minutes so if you're interested um i would recommend um the open minds um creative commons podcast so i've just listened to one actually with somebody from the smithsonian that's kind of talking about open licensing and open glam and there is also an excellent one um, with Catherine Styler who is the CEO of Creative Commons so just something that uh, you, uh, you you might want to tune into. Chris. So the next yeah the next thing here is the license uh, the newspaper licensing agency license that um, CNAC has been negotiating for some time now um, with CLA also involved CLA acting as the agent for the newspaper licensing agency um, we had been hoping in fact we'd hoped last year to to arrange a, a new license that, that that better fit the needs of the sector um, and then uh, obviously last year there was significant disruption to what we were we were doing and and it wasn't possible so we'd hoped to get that in place for the next academic year as in from august 2021 but unfortunately we haven't been able to uh, get agreement um, in time to be able to to have that in place for the next academic year so what we've agreed with nla is that we will roll over the existing license the nla is uh it's education establishment license um so i think i haven't got the url there but i think many people are um aware of that so it will roll over on the same terms uh, for this year but we we hope that we will be able to agree a, a new license. We, we, we've got a quite a long way. We, we really had, I think. Um, but clearly, from, from CNAC's perspective, in, in making a change from one license model to the other, we, we, we took all of the um, things on board that we'd heard from representatives of the sector. And we, we want to limit the amount that, you know, we don't want to see huge increases in payment for some institutions versus others so i think that's that's where the the, the detail is in in working through the models and how they impact on on each institution so we'll, we'll work will continue on that but we won't have a new license in place for this year mm, uh, yeah. and there will be a briefing coming because there there'll be something coming out won't there from you uk yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. that will actually formally uh, notify that. Um, I don't know whether uh, James wants to add anything to that from CLA's perspective at this moment. Uh, I'll give him a moment. Nothing to add, Not if you don't. Bring it. So, yep, that's where we are with that. So that's, uh, well, there's one other news item, which is there kind is. of leading on to yeah. the, the main event. So this is it the is. most recent waffle that we have done. It's for those who don't know, Jane and I do a regular, well, it kind of wasn't a particularly regular podcast, was it? But we're now getting back into the swing of it. And, we are, and this, yes. This is another good one, I'd say. It was. It was a really good opportunity to talk to uh, to Maren, who's the CEO of Alt, who's obviously been hugely supportive. And we wanted to time the release of this waffle so that it came out today, because today is obviously uh, an important day for um, the Copyright and Online Learning Special Interest Group. Um, but yeah, it's it's we had a lot of fun. Um, we we sort of degenerate at the end. There's a lot of talk about cake, isn't there? There is a very silly talk about cake at the end and I, I enjoyed talking um with Maren about a whole range of things but particularly the cake <laughs> yeah but no there's, there's some really good stuff in there and we'll, we'll touch on some of it in our presentation so let's let's crack on I would say to the main yeah. event yeah so, so here like we, we go a theme tune now feels like we it do does need feel like we need th in, yes I think we're going to have to to, to work on we that we probably need a 
we need a subgroup perhaps but here we are this is the main event it's the launch of the association for learning technologies copyright and online learning special interest group so here's the link um so yes a round of applause i felt like we should have perhaps had a drum roll or a fanfare mm. and imagine there's a fanfare um and it's all it's all happening so i'm if you'd like um, to hum a jingle this. now, Chris, you could perhaps hum one just sort of off the top of your head. Just <laughs> How's that? Good? <laughs> that's 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 fabulous. And that was really seamless with the transition between the slides as well. I liked Thank that you. a lot. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the webinars have kind of, I guess, demonstrated how much interest there is in the sector in um, copyright and its relationship to online learning. And so that really, I think, was the motivation um, for us to sort of think, like, could we do something else? But in fact, um, it was Martin, that, and Martin Hawksey that reached out to us specifically and said, had we thought about creating a special interest group um, on this topic? I think seeing how much, um, you know, of a sense of community was developing around the webinars, and we were very conscious we wanted to make it sustainable, didn't we, Chris? We did, absolutely. So. Um... The first slide that we've got here is a, a summary of what, what we've done so far. So we've got the committee. Uh, we've, we, we're talking about newsletter, logo, comms approach and events planning. So we're going to go into that in a bit more detail. But we also have a number of working groups in key areas. Um, and uh, we're going to talk through each of these, but we're also wanting to get ideas from you. Well, well we're going to be encouraging you to join. As far as we're concerned, if you're a regular um, attendee of, of the webinar, we would expect you to get quite a lot from actually being a member of the special interest group. Because um, really, so Chris, how would somebody join? If they want to join, what would they do? What do you think? What they, would what they, they do? Have? Well, if they were to go to that web um, page, the uh, alt, the ac.uk group special interest groups, you will see a form that is on that page. Uh, and you can actually sign up and give us your email address and then I we will just pop the um, form in there just well. put the form yep so we ask for um some information um about who it is so that we know who's 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 signed up to be a member of the group and really that means we'll keep you in touch with when the latest um webinars are happening and and how much does this cost how much how much does it cost well it's entirely free and it's a free oh. and open organization um for anybody interested in this area which is yeah. very much in line with um alt's principle so we if we look to the remit here let's describe what it is that this group is about it operates as a community of practice something that we've talked about a lot helps support local communities of practice in the field of copyright online learning and learning technology um we're looking to develop and recognize the copyright expertise within the educational community and advocate for copyright literacy within the community and more broadly. So some yeah. pretty high level things that we're trying to do. Um, this is what we needed to put in place there. Are, are you going to answer that goal? Is, is no, it, I'm not. I'm no? very sorry. That's the second time this number has called me and they've already left me a voicemail message. So hey, you're a very, very <laughs> popular continue. person. Nonetheless, My phone is so silent now. <laughs> when we when we applied for um, to be, to become a special interest group, they said how the part of Alt's uh, process is how do we support um, their strategic aims? And I think these are actually really Im important here: participative, mm. open, collaborative, innovative, inclusive, and transparent. Uh, because uh, we're very keen that this group isn't isn't closed, isn't about um, sort of sealing off. A, a, a boundary around what we're doing uh, because these these are issues that need to be um, discussed openly um, and you know we'll only we'll only get through them if we have diverse views on how we we uh, address the challenges that copyright and online learning uh, present to us uh, yeah. so yes Alan could do with some FE representation most definitely um, mm -hmm. So that that's a big part of it. Uh, so shall we uh, just quickly say who is in the, the, the committee? So Jane and I are the co-chairs. Um, and we have co-secretaries in Jenny and Caroline, both of whom are with us today. We have uh, an events team. Um, 
Greg is is our marketing and communications officer, but there are others also working with Greg on this. Emily's put herself Absolutely. forward as a as a legal um, expert, but we also have international representatives um, who uh, so Kyle, uh, a long term friend of the webinar and 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 Ice Pops. Um, and Melanie in, in Auckland, Irene's put herself forward for that as well. I think we're hoping that she's going to open up the Spanish speaking world because we do want to make certainly international um, links. Um, and there's a whole load of other people as well um, who, are, who are, well, let us look at the lovely faces of some of the committee <laughs> that agree to send us their, their, their photos. Yes. So we've got a beauty. good bunch of people, yeah, and I think we should probably um, move on to the next bit where we actually get some of them to speak rather to than, us, than just us. Two. Rather than us, yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I would like to invite Greg um, to talk us through the communications team, what you're doing and what you can tell us about the, the group. Absolutely, thanks again both Chris and Jane. Just to do a little preface, I'll be talking to this slide we have on screen but we'll be going to screen share just to examine the page that Chris showed there in a bit more detail and to look at our fantastic new Twitter account as well. So I might be jumping back and forth, but just to let everyone know. And I'll also be posting some links to the online resources we've developed so far into the chat after my uh, little talk has concluded. That's so great. Further... Greg, Greg yes. sorry to interrupt. I should have actually introduced you properly to say Greg Walters, learning technologist at the University of Glasgow. <laughs> I think many of the people on the call will know you very, very well indeed. Yes. It's just for for um, you know posterity to say thanks, Greg. That's where that's where you're from, and thank you very much for all the work you've done on this. You're very welcome. It's been great to be part of Chris. And what I'd like to do as well is just to go over the, the group's activities so far. So we had our first meeting at the tail end of January of this year. And since then, we've been developing the group's online and social media presence. And the group comprises of three officers. That's myself, Greg Walters. We also have uh, Samantha Ahern, who is from the University College London, and Deborah Ferns from University of Strathclyde. And aside from designing the group's logo and Twitter account, which we'll examine shortly, and we hope you like these, we um, also manage the group's um, online and social media presence. And currently these comprise of a web page, which I would like to just jump to now, if you bear with me, please. And there we go. I'm going to do what I call the, the catchphrase of 2020. Can everyone see my screen share OK? Yeah. Yeah, yes, thank you. Can. Excellent. Yes, we can. Yeah, excellent. Yes, That's yes. the stuff. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. So we have um, our page which is available through the Association for Foreign Technology and as you can see it provides a brief synopsis about the background, the remit of the group and the officers as well. But what I'd like to just explore in a little bit more detail, and this is something that Chris touched on earlier, it's how to sign up because it's a simple case of clicking on this link that I've highlighted on screen. And you've got taken to this lovely uh, Microsoft form, which is aligned with GDPR, and it will collect um, all the necessary fields. But it's just a simple text entry field, nothing too scary. And when you've entered all the relevant uh, information, just a case of clicking on Submit. And I'll just go back to the main page because there's something else I would just like to cover before moving on to social media, and that is our community space. This will be available shortly, and the community space will allow for group-related articles to be posted in a blog-style format. So that's how we're going to go forward with the user-generated content. But what I'd like to now focus on briefly is just our Twitter account. And bear with me, because I'm just going to do another little screen share. So I'm just going to stop this one, do another tab. And... And we should now be seeing Twitter with the coolest um, handle out there, the old cool sig. I'm hoping everyone can see that along with we that can see it. Excellent, yeah. good yeah. stuff. Yeah. There we go. So as I said, we have the coolest um, handle out there. And this space will be used again for really up to date news and um, any uh, additional information about any blog posts, etc. as well. So they are a promotional tool as well. 
And just to briefly go over as well, the um, both the web page and the Twitter spaces will be, in terms of content, they'll be in line with Chris and Jane's existing website, the copyright literacy dog dot org. And this is to ensure the content is both relevant and there's no duplication of content as well. And just another little highlight as well at the top, there's a pinned comment. And again, if you're looking for another way to sign up to the group, you can click on this link and it'll take you back to the web page you just came from. And again, you can sign up to the group that way as well. So that's just another method of trying to find our online presence. And on a content related note, um, I recently wrote a blog entry for the Information Literacy Group, which should be available later on today or, or early on next week. And the article provides a background about the information about the group and its remit. And like our alt page and Twitter account provides a link to sign up and become a member to our group. So I'm going to say I'm very biased here, but you should check out all of these. And um, going forward, I'll put the link to the blog post within our lovely new um, Twitter account as well. And now I'm just going to go back and stop sharing the screen and just talk to the slides uh, one more time, if that's OK. And I'll just stop sharing. Can we see the slides OK, everyone on screen? Or is it? Um, not yet. No. Not yet. Do you want me to go see if I can help you? Please, Chris, you have stopped screen sharing. X. There we go. Thank you. That's super. There Thank you go. very Lovely. much. Yeah. And it's just to talk to the other two um, points in screen regarding the newsletter and a strategy going forward. So we are currently exploring the use of MailChimp to deliver a quarterly newsletter to members. And this will be made available to uh, members after the group's committee meetings. And in relation to the blog, we're also exploring the use of having a Google Drive. And this is so members can submit blog articles as we're really keen to have user-generated content for use in our community space going forward. And again, looking to the future, we're going to develop a comm strategy and creating more of a social media presence by using platforms like YouTube. Because we feel in the case of YouTube, the videos will allow not only promotional materials to be generated, but also events and activities to be covered as well. And these videos can, of course, be embedded in other platforms. So that's where we're going in the future. So I'd like to conclude there. That's as a nutshell of who we are and where we're going in the future. And thanks again for your time, everyone. Thanks, Greg. Thank That's you. really yeah, thank great. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, excellent. And I'd also yeah. like to say uh, that this new logo that we've got, the the green one with the cool shades, and um, so Greg has put that together. Um, mm. uh, despite some rather fussy um, graphic design input from certain people, <laughs> me mainly, um, but I think we've got a quite a strong. Uh, Can we just visual. have the glasses a little bit bigger? Do you think the glasses just, should be a little bit bigger? Maybe a little bit smaller? Maybe bit four bigger. or five <laughs> pixels to the left. Four, no, no. He was very right patient here. with you. Very patient, Greg. Thank but you. Just, <laughs> but just to say that what we're doing here is is aligning this clearly with Alt as the, the, the special interest group of Alt and trying to make that link between copyright and online learning whilst also having that link with with copyright literacy and, and the work that Jane and I have done and to really yeah. um, not try to reinvent the wheel not try to create a brand new you know space where we don't need one we've agreed that uh, we don't really need a, a separate um, GISC mail discussion list because we're also used to um, using CopySeq and that's a place where we go and many of these community discussions happen. Um, not to say that's the only place that we'll we'll have um, you know, uh, discussions or, or activity, but that just, you know, we're trying to build on what we've already got rather than confuse everybody. Um, so I think it's, we've got that strong, um, strong visual brand so and we we've great. also got we've got greg in charge i think of t-shirts haven't we t-shirt production that'll be yeah. that'll be coming that'll be coming soon so there'll be space. all sorts of merch coming up in, in due course <laughs> yeah. right let's hand over now to uh, stephen penton from city university and caroline lloyd from uh, nottingham to talk to us about the accessibility working group and what we plan to do here Thank you, Chris. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Stephen. Brilliant. Um, so uh, this, the, there's about half a dozen members in this group, of which at least two, I think, are here this morning, myself and Caroline Lloyd from the University of Nottingham. 
Um, the idea for this group arose um, when I was discussing accessibility measures for CLA licensed scans with Chris and Jane. Um, and as we discussed it, we realised that there were other accessibility issues that have um, a copyright aspect to them. Um, and so that was the idea of this group. And of course, um, CLA licensed scans have been particularly important during the pandemic. Um, so we've had uh, one meeting so far um, in which we agreed on this remit to provide guidance by producing documentation, holding events and other activities. Um, and advocacy on behalf of the sector on copyright related accessibility issues. Um, and we found four main areas of focus that were of interest to us as a group, um, uh, which is quite a lot. So it's possible we may prioritize them. Um, but one was um, generation of transcripts for third party material. So this is material developed, obviously, outside of one's institution. So it might be material that you get um, from the Internet, YouTube, perhaps. And the question of making it accessible for um, for students who need it and any comp copyright implications there may be um, for that. So we aim to produce some guidance, probably to clarify that and um, make recommendations as to what we can actually do um, without um, infringing um, the copyright legislation. Um, and then there were a couple of ebook accessibility issues that were identified. Um, one was um, inconsistency of accessibility measures across different platforms for the same books. Um, so we hope to address that in some way, um, perhaps through advocacy, perhaps through um trying to um raise awareness as part of the um, wider ebook conversations that are going on at the moment um relating to excessive price um and the other issue was um something that is actually a problem for everybody but particularly for accessible people where um drm limits may stop um you know more more than a certain amount or maybe even any um, downloading or printing out of material from ebooks. So um, we're hoping what we're intending to look at that as well. I'm going to hand over to Caroline to talk about the other two um, areas of focus that we've decided upon. Thanks, Stephen. I hope. Thanks. Yep. I hope you can all hear me. Yes. So um, the third in, um, issue that we wanted to focus on initially was um, the use of Blackboard Ally, which is a service that students can use themselves to create accessible copies in various formats. Um, and we um, want to look at the copyright implications of these services and what level of institutional risk that this might bring to, um, to universities that choose to offer these services. Um, University of Nottingham does not have this service, so I don't know a huge amount about it, but the group as a whole is going to is going to investigate the various aspects of this. And then um, the fourth area um, is the accessibility of CLA scans. So um, we want to continue to provide education and resources for people who are wanting to improve the accessibility of the scans that they're providing to their students under the CLA license. So we're going to look at producing guidelines on um, accept uh, what best practice and definition of terms and practical guidance as well. Um, the other thing that actually came up yesterday was um, if some of you may have been at the webinar that the CLA did, um, where David Duffield was talking about their plans to improve their student reader um, and they are looking for um, institutions to test that and give them feedback. So hopefully um, some members of the group will be uh, and University of Nottingham is looking to be one of the people who, who does this um, and hopefully we'll be able to test it and look at it from an accessibility point of view. When they first brought out the student reader originally uh, we did look at it at Nottingham and decided not to use it um, because it's um, it wasn't horrible from an accessibility point of view, but it wasn't great either. So hopefully the next one can be better and hopefully we'll be able to help with that. 
Um, so those are our initial main areas of focus. Um, but if there's any other issues that you think the group would be um, should be looking at, then please do let us know. Um, and if you are interested in joining us, then the more the merrier. That's brilliant, thank you. Caroline. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I think it sounds like CLA um, might want to um, join up and, and talk to you about that as well. Just on the, 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 so you mentioned Blackboard Ally, and I know, I think there are other tools, aren't there, that are available that do similar yes, things. So I think it's the other major one, but again, yeah. we don't use it, so yeah. I don't know much about it personally. But I think it's it's kind of the broad principle about what's the risk of any of the kind of tools that let students do the format shift in themselves, isn't it, as well, that you're interested yes, in? Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. So um, I guess if yeah people are interested in getting involved, then obviously sign up to join the group but um, and we can put you in touch with Stephen and Caroline or you can reach out to them. Um, and, uh, you know, that it, it's a really important area. Um, and I think we're looking forward to seeing some really good work coming out of this and guidance and, and particularly, you know, the sort of advocacy as well side of things. So thanks, Caroline and Stephen, for that update. That's brilliant. Thank you. Chris, what's, what, who have we got next? What's the next one? Well, the next yes. one is about copyright and its relationship with ethics. So this is really hooking into work that's um, underway um, within ALT. Uh, and and uh, this is a, I will find you the link, or Jane, perhaps you can post the link in the chat to the um, ALT ethical framework, piece of work that's being undertaken by a group of ALT trustees. Um, and we were involved in a really interesting discussion to see where they've got to. They're currently working on a group, a, a set of principles um, about the use of learning technology um, uh, that, that address the ethical issues for learning technologists or educators or anyone who is putting um, uh, learning technology tools in place or, or relying on them. Um, you know, it's becoming an increasingly, um, you know, I will say ubiquitous part of, of what's happening in education. So it was uh, th there are some links between that and uh, copyright. So we've set up a, a group here. Um, and one of the things we've noted is that legal use, one of the principles that, that, that came up with in the first draft of this ethical framework was saying that you know, learning technology should always be used in a lawful way that you know, protects users and, and, and safeguards um, their interests. That's not the exact wording. But the interesting thing here is that legal use is not necessarily the same as, as ethical use. So there are, you know, there are ways you can use something that are legal. Um, and for example, indigenous culture is an example, something that we might regard as being in the public domain, uh, because the law says it, it can be used and reused without um, legal repercussions, but they still have ethical dimensions that we need to consider about um, views of, of, of ownership and custodianship of culture. So that's one example, and, and members of the group, um, Emily uh, Hudson and Melanie Johnson, both of whom have done work in this area, um, you know, we, we're ready to respond to that and collaborate with ALT when they, when they um, go through this process of, of finalising the framework. But anyone that is interested in these ethical dimensions um, of copyright and its use in learning technology. Another example of that is you know, consent to have agreeing to, to have um, educational you know, lectures and seminars recorded and what happens with those recordings. We know that that's definitely um, a hot topic still. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's another important area and um, you're going to be leading that one, aren't you, Chris? So I, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've been um, uh, looking with a, a, a group of um, the committee at uh, Copyright Education and Resources. Um, we, we've got, got a sort of a, a working group that's going to do um, more work in this area. But just in the first instance, what we um, what we did was bring together a list of copyright education resources from the UK. Um, IFLA had put out a call um, asking um, people to contribute any sort of existing copyright education resources that they knew about. They're going to be doing some work in this area, potentially developing more education resources. And I think one of the first things they wanted to do was say, well, what, what is there around the world? Um, so we 
um, did a, a kind of crowdsourced attempt at doing this to start with, um, but it actually seemed more um, helpful to bring a working group together to put, put that together. So that's gone off to IFLA. We've had acknowledgement from them that they've um, received it. And the group needs to meet again now to just talk about things like, well, what would we do with this list? You know, is it useful, for example, um, to put that list up on a website? I'm a bit conscious of lists of links that need obviously ongoing maintenance and the best way of thinking about um, doing that. But uh, it would be helpful if there's any feedback. I mean, you know, we already know that there's lists out there of copyright resources. Chris and I maintain a list of all the universities um, uh, copyright pages so if you haven't ever seen that um, and you might want to have a look at that we try to keep that up to date but we do rely on people to get in touch with us to tell us um, if that list is up to date I'm just conscious of creating a kind of overhead if we were to say well let's try to keep up to date a list of copyright education resources I think we'd need we need to have a bit of a think about that but we are interested also in um, broader issues in that working group so I think we'd like to explore um, so CMALT, which is if you want to become a certified member of the Association for Learning Technology, what sort of options might there be um, to do that as somebody who, who's a kind of copyright specialist um, and how, you know, so we'll hopefully be talking more to Maren and talking to Alt about that. Um, and um, we would still also like to sort of down the line talk about this idea of developing some sort of standalone um, qualification in, in sort of copyright um, that's not obviously as, as involved as doing um, a postgraduate diploma, um, but a bit more than just a one day course. So um, again, it's a group where we're very open and if you're, if you're interested and you'd like to get involved in that, then drop me a line, I'd say, um, in the first instance. And we're going to be having a meeting, um, another meeting again fairly soon, um, probably in the next next couple of months, certainly in the next month or so, I would have thought we'll be, we'll be getting together. Yeah, mm -hmm, definitely. So another thing that's on the list that the group is interested in is the codes of fair practice work. Um, and we're going to hand over to Bart Bartolomeo Maletti, who's at Learning on Screen and at Create at Glasgow and wears another uh, number of hats uh, for those that know Bart. So Bart, are you are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. So over to you. Yeah, thanks, Chris and Zane. Uh, right, hello, everyone. So this working group uh, is working on developing a codes of fair practice for the education sector. So basically, the goal of the initiative is to identify and codify shared principles and best practices that educators can rely on uh, to make informed decisions around the reuse of audiovisual works and also other protected materials uh, for educational purposes. So the final outcome of the initiative will basically be a code or a series of codes, you know, outlining such principles and best practices. And one of the specific problems we are trying to address uh, through the initiative is the uncertainty surrounding uh, forbidding exceptions, especially those introduced in 2014, uh, like illustration for instruction. So uh, this initiative started as a pilot project, uh, a collaboration between Learning on Screen, the University of Kent, City University of London and CREATE at the University of Glasgow. And as part of that pilot, we conducted two online workshops in June and July 2020, uh, which attracted 48 film academics uh, from over 30 different HC institutions in the UK. Uh, well, then we basically systematized the findings of those workshops and used those to create a questionnaire for participants to try and reach consensus on a set of principles and norms that you know, were discussed at the workshops and may characterize uh, fair practice. So that was all part of the pilot and in the meantime we also applied for HLC funding to finalize and extend this work and hopefully we'll be hearing from the HLC soon. And if we get the funding, you know, that will allow us to, uh, you know, do more workshops and set up also, importantly, a legal panel to review the code. If we don't get the funding, you know, we will find other ways to build upon this initial work. Uh, also, I thought, you know, it would be interesting to share, like, the main stages of the initiative. So the project is basically structured in four main stages. So first, you know, we need to establish the legal scope, that is, you know, the legal framework provided by UK copyright law for the use of audiovisual materials for educational purposes. 
And in that respect, you know, very helpfully, uh, there is timely and authoritative research and scholarship that we can refer to for this, such as the recent papers by Emily Hudson that most of you are aware of. Uh, also, yeah, by the way, the, as Chris and Jay mentioned, uh, Emily gave uh, an excellent public lecture based on her book on Wednesday at CREATE. And so if you missed that, uh, the uh, recording of the lecture should be made available on the create.ac.uk website, hopefully soon. Right, then after establishing the legal framework, then we need to establish acceptable norms. So, you know, that's what we started doing uh, through the workshops and the questionnaire uh, that we conducted with film educators as part of the pilot. And hopefully, you know, we will extend this, that work also to other disciplines uh, if we get the funding. And an important part of this stage of the project is also to get those norms reviewed by legal experts. And again, you know, how we do this will depend on if and when we get the funding. And then, you know, once the codes are reviewed by the legal panel, the next steps, will, which are also equally important, are to get the code endorsed and adopted by, you know, the, the education sector and possibly also, you know, employers uh, within the creative industries. And these two stages, I think, basically endorsement and adoption is where I think that these special interest group and more generally this community, you know, can play a very important role. Uh, to conclude, uh, I also wanted to mention that this Fair Practice Initiative is also linked to other uh, current projects that I'm involved in. Uh, so one is an Horizon 2020 project called Recreating Europe, uh, for which CREATE is de developing codes of fair practice also for documentary filmmakers and what we are currently calling the immersive cultural heritage sector. And connected to that, the UK Feature Docs project led by the University of West England in Bristol also set up a screen heritage group uh, of its own part, which will support the development of the code of, uh, you know, for documentary filmmakers. And then Dr. Shailo Sullivan uh, from Kingston University also just submitted an ASLC application where I'm involved, and that's to extend Shane's project, Make Film History, which you may be aware of, the Archives for Education project, which provides like a licensing scheme for the creative reuse of a number of archive material. And so the if the you know the funding application is successful, that will extend that project and also include the development of codes of fair practice for teachers in the UK and Ireland, and also different levels of education, including further education and the primary and secondary schools. So I mean, you can see here you know, there is quite a lot of activity you know around this fair practice initiative, and uh, you know it also comes with a lot of challenges, but you know that's why you know we are working on it. And yes, I think you know the you know this new special interest group can play an important role, you know, in this project, especially in relation to endorsement and adoption of the codes. Um, so yeah, that was my bit. Thank you, Bart. That's that's really great. And I, we, we just to clarify that Alt um, are uh, a partner on the bid for for the funding. So I think this special interest group is the way that we can make sure that the the copyright expertise within the community is linked up with. The learning technology community more broadly and, and that adoption endorsement uh, process so it's a, a really good opportunity but thank you very much that's a, that's a great overview and we, we very much hope to have some good news on that soon but we will obviously have to wait and see um, yes fingers crossed <laughs> fingers crossed so um it, that leads on to the point about collaboration and partnerships so these are these are not a list of groups that we have agreed memoranda of understanding on working with these are um opportunities we think to, to speak to these organizations many of whom we are members of as individuals um the, the information literacy group jane is the chair of um we've uh, and oh, you're also a member of of lacquer libraries and archives copyright alliance who are very active in this area of course for many years and have been advocating on behalf of the library sector so there's strong links there as well we've responded to a silip um uh, knowledge skills base um consultation to say this is where copyright is an important part of librarians professional development um national acquisitions group we have scott Pryor has also uh, recently joined the committee because we realized that we really want to have a, a strong link between acquisitions librarians who are facing the issues with ebook pricing and how we get resources um and and what that means for potential um you know uh things like controlled digital lending and the pressure that we're under given that that's taken hold in the us what does it mean for the uk uh jane do you want to uh add some uh additional detail to the remaining ones we put on the yeah, list yeah i mean 
IFLA is an obvious um, potential international partner um, and we're already um, in contact with uh, Stephen Weiber and um, uh, Camille Francois who are both IFLA who sort of deal with copyright education and information literacy things. So we're looking um, at how we can link up with their group which is called uh, Copyright and Other Legal Matters and we're going to attend um, as an observer the meeting in April because these have all shifted online. So actually one advantage is that it actually means there could be more opportunities to, to get involved with uh, some of these international groups without having to travel um, and be able to go to the meetings. We've um, had some initial um, discussions with the Alt Open Education SIG, which is another special interest group which has got an obvious um, overlap with, so I think we're, we're thinking potentially about an event to discuss the relationship between copyright literacy, copyright, literacy, copyright education and open um, practice. Um, and then we have an, quite a number of members of the uh, the cool gang who are also members of the UK Guild Copyright Negotiation and Advisory Committee. So in addition to Chris and I, we have uh, Kate Vasily, we have Neil Sprunt and we have Chris Jones um, who are all on both of those committees. So um, lots of opportunities, I think. And we're looking, as I say, all the time, if anyone's got suggestions for groups that they think we should make some links with, then um, please let us know. Absolutely. So thank you for that. So the final slide with words and bullet points is this one here where we've got an events team who have put together a calendar of events, the ones where we are presenting at, such as um, OER 21 and OER X Domains, the open education um, uh, conference that Alt host, where we will be exploring that link between copyright, copyright literacy and open education. We're also, we had a, um, a presentation accepted at the ABC conference, and this is Jane and I really, we're taking the opportunity to talk about this group as much as possible. Um, mm. um, and we will be doing the same at the SILIP copyright conference in May, um, as mm -hmm. we've discussed. Um, we want to share as widely as possible the insights from Emily's research over many years with hundreds of practitioners, which have real, I think, importance for our community. If we can understand the ways in which we look at risk and understand how we make sense of legislation. And I think there's also an opportunity coming off the back of this to think about advocacy and legal reform and what it means. So we have a lot of discussion um, um, on, on, on CopySeq about how this works and you know how uh, there's been public letters uh, over since the pandemic began, how do we deal with online learning? So I think that we're hoping to to drill down into some of that. Um, we have, we, I can't believe it's not ice pop. We have indeed. <laughs> and in which you this, keep referring to as ICBINI. Well, it, it's Ikbini, yes. yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, and more about that very soon. I think we've got mm -hmm. quite a number of people who've already agreed to speak and we're going to put out a call um, to recruit um, a few more people. So uh, lots of uh, opportunities um, to still get involved in that, actually. Um, We've put down that we might want to run some workshops in support of CNAC licensing. So um, the, the CNAC itself doesn't really sort of have any um, uh, any budget or any kind of capacity to run events as such. So we think it might be an opportunity to sort of um, for the cool gang to take some of that on, given the overlaps between the committees. Um, and then very exciting, I've got a group together of people who are interested in um, fair, uh, running a, a fair dealing week um, for the first time ever in the UK. Um, so that will be next year in February. Um, and um, again, something if you're interested in getting involved, drop, drop me a line. Not much has happened on that front yet. Just um, I've just been suggesting a few uh, things about how that could work. Yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant. So it's, it's all looking very exciting. So the, the, the thing that we're now going to say is if you have any thoughts about events or anything at all that um, has popped up here, we want you to get in touch. And so the final message is your call SIG needs you. Copyright is copyright belongs to you. It's your issue. And this is you're clearly joining into the webinars every week because it's uh, something you, you you have responsibility for or an interest in. Um, and this is where we can come together 
uh, and it's not too late to get involved. So we, you've no, seen at the, at the beginning, there's a list of committee members. This is not a closed, you know, a group of people. That's it. You've missed your chance to get involved. We need people who are interested in these areas, um, who who are who are able, who've got the capacity to to work through and and, and ask the, the right questions and, and and collaborate on on solutions to, to come and join us. So and suggest um, new areas as well if there's things absolutely. we haven't thought of. So this yeah. was really just very much a first go at coming up with the sort of working groups that we thought made sense but if there are other really pressing issues related to copyright and online learning that um, you think need wider discussion then uh, we want to hear from you so we're going to stop I think we have we almost run out of time but we does have. anyone want to ask any questions Alan has just Alan Ray thank you has just highlighted World Intellectual Property Day uh, we ha think have that on our calendar we don't have a specific we event do. planned but I think no. we'll certainly plan some Twitter um, activity perhaps we could tweet um, some previous webinar recordings or something on that day well, <laughs> but anyone anyone would would anyone like to would anyone like to come in and um, just ask any questions or 